Hello and welcome, my friends and viewers, to this week's episode of Legend Lore, where I draw and talk about monsters, characters, gods, and other things from D&D 5th edition, all while giving a small but quickly digestible history about them. Together we'll go over their history, how they're utilized in modern gaming, and how you guys can utilize them in your own games. This week, we're going to be going over the ape-insect hybrid monstrosity known as Umber Hulks. Getting right into it, in terms of their appearance, Umber Hulks appear to be a cross between a beetle and a gorilla, being absolutely massive in shape and standing upwards of 8 to 9 feet tall, with clawed hands, two pairs of eyes, and a set of massive mandibles that flanked two rows of sharp teeth. One pair of eyes were large and sat at the sides of the head like most traditional insects, while the other ones were small and ape-like, resting on top of the creature's forehead. Most of an Umber Hulk's body was covered in thick chitinous plates that served as a natural armor, and they were overall strong enough to tear through rock and stone with ease. Umber Hulks also had a series of gill-like openings on their stout short necks, which they used to smell and sense other creatures within their vicinity. Now beyond its monstrous strength and the ability to navigate and burrow through tunnels, an Umber Hulk's smaller eyes were capable of causing the minds of those near it to become scrambled, causing a variety of different effects ranging from moving in random directions, to lashing out at those near them, or just standing there dazed and confused. The ability is very similar to the confusion spell within 5th edition. There's no real explanation for this beyond my own personal theory that maybe Umber Hulks are slightly psionic, their eyes acting as focuses for their power which can be used to disorient their prey before attacking. It's even implied that those who survive an Umber Hulk attack can have trouble remembering the encounter due to the effects of this ability, which adds a bit more credibility to it being an actual psychic attack rather than just a visual effect. In regards to their behavior, while most believe Umber Hulks to be large, lumbering idiots, they're actually far more intellectually capable than most give them credit for. They're capable of rational thought and strategic planning, meaning that they can steal, plan ambushes, and enlist more cunning tactics when dealing with a party, especially with their eye attack and their earth-shaping capabilities. With this in mind, Umber Hulks were often solitary creatures, and were usually encountered in the underground or the underdark due to their dislike of bright light. If found in a group, it was usually a small one of about two to four Umber Hulks, often only formed due to there being some kind of threat that required more than one Umber Hulk to tackle. This means that if you were to find a group of Umber Hulks during your adventure, you best bet that there is something nastier nearby that they themselves are preparing for, and that you as a party may have to deal with. Umber Hulks were also capable of speaking their own language, formed out of grunts and the clicking of their mandibles. They could also speak the Terran dialect of Primordial and could understand deep speech. Umber Hulks were also often caught and enslaved by other races as guardians or laborers, such as Neogi, Drow, Grimlocks, and even subterranean dragons. As such, they make for great frontliners and bruisers to make up an underdark encounter for your party. Umber Hooks were also omnivores, known to feed on both fungi and lichen that grew around their caves, as well as all manner of creatures from oncakes to humanoids to even giant purple worms, that last one often taking the efforts of multiple Umber Hooks to take them down. With this said, this means that Umber Hooks can be the terror of all sorts of smaller underdark creatures, such as Darrow or Deep Gnomes or even Mykonids, who we've covered in a previous video. In terms of Umber Hulk subtypes, there is distinctly two. There are the Horrids, which stand about 16 feet tall and were viciously stronger and notoriously less intelligent than their smaller cousins, and then there were the Umber Ravagers, which were hulks that were smaller than average but made up for it by both numbers and sheer unrelenting ferocity, being encountered on the surface more frequently than your traditional Umber Hulk. Speaking of encounters, when it comes to running Umber Hulks in combat, they usually only fought when it came to hunting for a specific purpose or gaining some material benefit. They weren't the sort of creatures to operate purely on instinct, nor would they fight to the death. As such, they would implement tactics such as ambushes, raids, and even lay simple traps such as burrowing and lying in wait for people to walk over them, digging pits for prey to fall into, or causing rockfalls and miniature avalanches. Umber Hulks were also capable of burrowing right through cover such as dirt or rock, so that wizard that keeps throwing lightning bolts from behind the boulder is going to have a bad time once the Hulk closes the distance. When in close combat, the Umber Hulk's gaze will allow it to soften up frontliners like fighters and barbarians, either causing them to lose control of themselves or risk attacking their allies in the confusion. This can force a party to have to split up rather than bunching in together. And I personally like to deploy Umber Hulks alongside other insectoid monsters for variety, such as Onkegs, Thrycreen, or even Rust Monsters if I want a particularly nasty encounter. We'll go over this a little bit more detail later on in the video, but an Umber Hulk stunning or grappling an adventure can be a great setup for an Onkeg to unleash a nasty acidic bite, or for a Rust Monster to just start dusting armor and magic items piece by piece. Now in regards to how I like to personally run Umber Hulks at my table, I actually find them to be a pretty straightforward and excellent Underdark monster to run. Their lore isn't complicated, and they have just enough variety to be interesting on their own, while remaining versatile enough to be deployed with other non-Umber Hulk creatures in order to prevent their presence from getting stale. 
With that said, I have no personal changes that I'd like to implement, but I do have a couple of encounters that I would like to share with you guys that you can stick into your games. My first is something I call the Underdark Menagerie, which, as previously stated, is a legion of classic insectoid Underdark monsters who have collected to cover each other's weaknesses and to bolster each other's strengths. Umber Hulks, Onkegs, and Rust Monsters all coming together in a viciously effective community can take down legions of Drow, Duergar, or Darrow with carefully placed ambushes, pit traps, tunnel collapses, and other strategies. And if you're not an Eberron purist, you can stick Thrykreen down here as the leading masterminds behind this alliance, but other highly intelligent creatures such as Illithids, Aboleth, or Beholders can work just as well. The point of such a faction is to show that these races have realized that they're stronger together rather than alone. Ankegs with their speed, Umberhulks with their strength, and Rust Monsters with their ability to destroy the protections of their prey, be it magical or otherwise. And for our second encounter, we have Hulks on a Worm, which I found can be pretty comedic depending on how you wish to portray it. But essentially, the party discovers a purple worm breaking through the surface before tunneling back down into the earth. And with a high enough perception check, they can see that a dozen little orange dots are scattered across the purple worm surface. These dots are in fact a squad of umber hulks who are all working together to take down this massive worm, all in the hopes of eating it. You can use this as a simple set piece for your campaign, having it take place far away so your players can't really interact with it. Or if your party is keen to take down a purple worm in the same manner, they could perhaps form an alliance with the local umber hulks in the area, in order to take the creature down for their own separate reasons. Lastly, if your party is distinctly empathetic towards the purple worm, which, you know, can happen sometimes, perhaps they can aid it by taking down the umber hulks that are hunting it, and thus gain the loyalty and possible use of an underdark transportation system via said purple worm. Now in terms of components that could be harvested from Umber Hulks, their powerful carapaces and mandibles can be made into equipment such as shields, maces, or spiked armor, and they were particularly useful in the enchantment of magic items. Umber Hulk mandibles were actually said to be sold of upwards of 550 gold pieces each, and I would also say that their second pair of confusion-inducing eyes can fetch a good price if harvested and preserved. Building on top of that, here are a couple of magic items that I personally feel would fit in terms of being made out of Umber Hulk components or fitting their aesthetic. And lastly, for a homebrew magic item in this video, we have Hulk Hands. The Hulk Hands are a powerful pair of spiked gauntlets that require attunement, and are made from a careful fusion of the Umber Hulk's carapace, teeth, and eyes. While attuned, the wearer has a burrow speed equal to half their movement, has proficiency in unarmed attack rolls, and deals 1d6 bludgeoning and 1d6 piercing damage upon a successful hit. Additionally, twice a day the wearer can expose the eye of the Umber Hulk to a target that it can see within 20 feet of them as a bonus action. The target must then make a wisdom saving throw or suffer the effects of the confusion spell for 3 rounds, able to make a new saving throw against it at the end of every turn on subsequent rounds. The DC for this effect equals 8 plus twice your proficiency bonus, rather than having to rely on any specific ability score. I've actually found this to be a pretty good compromise when it comes to handling DCs that you don't want to rely on a specific ability score, be it spellcasting or otherwise. And with that, that's our coverage of the Umber Hulk, everybody. I want to thank all of you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and press the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. And DMs and players, please comment down below how you guys have used or encountered Umber Hulks in your individual games, as well as let me know what you guys would like to see in upcoming videos. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.